Welcome back to Power Play. The unemployment rate is soaring. COVID-19 cases are going to reach the tens of thousands, maybe, in the best case scenario. That's what we learned from uh, two sets of data released today. Neither bring in much good news, but just how accurate are the numbers? Could things actually get worse? The press gallery is here to dissect this stuff. CTV Ottawa Bureau Chief Joyce Napier joins us. And to make sense of all the numbers, two special guests today. CTV News Medical Specialist Dr. Marla Shapiro and Deloitte Canada's Chief Economist Craig Alexander, both coming to us from Toronto. Uh, good to have all of you here. Happy Passover and Happy Easter. Dr. Marla, uh, let me start with you. You saw the federal COVID-19 models and their predictions. Do you believe these give us an accurate picture of what we should expect? They are predictions. So predictions will only bear out as accurate as time goes forward. But I think what they're telling us more importantly is the trend in terms of what we're seeing, that we are at the beginning and the concept of physical distancing is one of the three things that we should be doing. The physical distancing is going to have to go on for weeks, if not months. But it also tells us that that strategy of mitigation is not enough. We have to ramp up the testing. We have to ramp up containment, which means test more than we've been doing to date, find an individual's positive, find their contacts, quarantine those contacts. Without those three strategies together, we cannot succeed. Okay, but Dr. Mel, let me just press, because I just asked the health minister, we're not doing general population testing. So are these models, they're, they're not necessarily predictions, they're scenarios, but are these models, in your view, mm -hmm. do they give us an accurate picture of where we are and where we're going? I think they do give us an idea of where we are, where we're going, and I think we're also basing it on what's happened in other countries as well. But where we go will really depend on how well we do. You know, we talk about all types of numbers that seem to have people confused, myself included. If you look at the world data, it says as much as 30 to 40 percent of a population can be infected. Right now, 5 percent of those tested, tested, not the population, are positive. But there's so many out there with symptoms who have yet to be tested, and we don't know about those who are asymptomatic. So the answer is, is that we don't know, but we do know this is serious and we do know the numbers are large. Joyce, to the, I mean, we're getting provincial numbers now, the federal numbers. What was your reaction when you saw these? Does all this stuff line up? Well, you know, it depends because you have to really read between the lines. And Dr. Shapiro is quite right. All the experts are telling us the same thing. Test test, test. So yes, physical distancing, of course, is a good idea. Um, and, and that will keep that curve, you know, under control. Uh, but we haven't tested sufficiently in Canada, and we know that. Uh, we know that. We have personal experience in our own surroundings of people who should have been tested just so that we know where this is going. There are asymptomatic people out there as well. So, but it's interesting to see those, if you, if you kind of read between the, the lines, if 1% of the population gets infected, if 8%, if 5%. So you get a kind of idea there. Uh, does it, you know, is it going to help us sleep better tonight? I don't think so. But at least it gives you an idea of kind of where we are and kind of where we're going. And, you know, this is going to last more than a couple of more weeks. Yeah, that's the new normal. Craig Alexander, the health and the issue and the economic issues are deeply connected. The Prime Minister said today the crisis could go on for a year until we get a vaccine or more. Meaning from an economic point of view, we're going to get battered. And StatsCan had its labor force survey today with almost 8% unemployment, a million job losses. Does that paint an accurate picture or are things worse than we think? Well, I think the StatsCan gives us a very accurate picture of what happened in March. Uh, the survey was done between March the 15th and the 21st. So we know that there was job losses after the, the survey was done. And next month, we'll get another update. I think StatsCan's Stats actually stepped up to the plate remarkably well on the communication side because they're providing a lot more details than they do traditionally when we get reports. So just today, they said a million, a million Canadians had lost their jobs in March, but they went further and they talked about, you know, what share of workers uh, were not working but also weren't looking for work because, because of the pandemic and businesses being closed and how many workers were actually affected in terms of reduced hours. And so in total, what StatsCan reported was that about 3 million Canadians were personally affected by the COVID-19 epidemic and the efforts around containment. 
And that, that lines up quite well with what we were hearing in March in terms of the applications for right. employment insurance and the new, the new benefits. So yeah, yes, yes, I think it's an accurate portrayal. It also tells us though, you know, what we already knew, which was the economy basically fell off a cliff in order to do the containment. What's interesting is how financial markets are actually strengthening right now because they already priced in the downturn. Now they're actually looking towards the recovery. Right. Uh, just in the last 30 seconds, I've got with you guys as time flies here. Joyce, Parliament's got a return for an emergency sitting on Saturday. What do you expect to see? Well, I expect them to be a little bit faster than they were last time. That's why they're taking their time now. I think they're pouring over the uh, Liberal proposal. And, I mean, you heard uh, Andrew Scheer. Uh, they want to keep the institutions alive. They want to keep their right to ask those questions and to oppose alive. So I kind of understand that. But on the other hand, I also understand that there are millions of people out there who need this money. So I'm hoping that on Saturday it won't take them, you know, all night uh, to get this through. Uh, Joyce Napier will be watching that closely on Question Period. Craig Alexander, Dr. Marla Shapiro, thanks so much. That's your Power Play, Dan Paul.